Bé, bona tarda. En nom de l'Eugènia Serra, us dono la benvinguda en aquesta sessió del Seminari Granados que farem a la biblioteca. Seré una mica ràpida perquè el nostre primer convidat parla des de Sydney i allà és la una de la matinada i ja l'hem fet esperar una miqueta. Good evening, Mr. Phillips. Good evening. Welcome to the seminar of Granados in Barcelona. Uh, I'm just you. going to introduce you briefly, and then you, you will start speaking, if you agree. Uh, Sr. Peter Phillips is a student of doctorate de fi de carrera al Conservatori de Música de Sydney. Acaba de presentar la seva tesi que examina una sèrie d'aspectes relacionats amb la reproducció dels rotlles de pianola. El seu interès en aquests rotlles es va iniciar el 1976 a través de Dennis Condon, que va néixer el 1933 i va morir el 2012, la col·lecció dels rotlles del qual va ser comprada per la Universitat de Stanford, als Estats Units, el 2014. Abans que la col·lecció sortís d'Austràlia, Peter en va digitalitzar una gran part amb un aparell especialment dissenyat per fer-ho. La temàtica de la creació de fitxers d'àudio dels rotlles de pianola per fer-los accessibles a través dels moderns mitjans de comunicació constitueix una part important de la seva tesi, juntament amb una anàlisi dels catàlegs de les marques de rotlles d'artista i d'una altra anàlisi de com es van produir físicament aquests rotlles. Peter Phillips ha donat conferències en institucions com la Universitat de Stanford i eh, tracta de promoure el valor inherent i la importància dels enregistraments d'aquests rotlles de pianola. En aquest sentit, cal destacar la seva col·laboració amb la pianista i també doctora Carolina Estrada, que clourà amb un concert aquest seminari Granados. Donem pas al senyor Phillips. Peter Phillips, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I wish I could be with you today. However, I am delighted to be able to present this talk from Sydney, Australia, by Scott. My topic concerns reproducing piano rolls. Granados recorded piano rolls for four major companies, Velta, Hupfell, Playella, and Duo Art. I will talk briefly about these companies and how they made their recording. My thesis has examined the important question of making piano roll recording accessible. My work in this area goes back a long way, and later on I will outline my methodology for producing MIDI files or piano rolls that suit contemporary MIDI instruments. Carolina Estrada recently completed a doctorate that examines Granados performance practice through his piano roll recordings. Similar research was also done by Anatol Lycan from the University of California. Granados played four recordings on disc for Odeon in 1912, and it's interesting to compare these to his piano roll recordings. After all, some researchers do not believe piano rolls are accurate to the artists and therefore rely only on discs or cylinder recording. This is Granados playing an extract of his Spanish dance number 10, the 1912 disc recordings. Sorry, it was my fault.
Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe this is the next uh, slide. We slide finished? Slide four. Yeah. So here is Granados playing the same extract of his Spanish dance number 10 from his 1915 duo art roll recording. Let's go here. Sorry, I think I, I made a mistake because the first one should have sound like this. I'm sorry. So can you listen to the difference? So maybe I'll stop. And then you can remember the previous sound. Please go on, Peter, I'm sorry. The fidelity of the piano roll recording is clearly superior to that of the disc recording. As well, disc recordings then were limited to three minutes, so we get a rather rushed version of the disc. Granados only recorded four works on disc, while he made 38 recordings on piano roll of 21 of his works. So his piano roll recordings are obviously how he wished to display his art and to have it preserved. When we compare disc and roll recordings, it is clear that the rolls captured the performance very well. But how were the roll recordings made by each of these companies? Slide six. Reproducing piano rolls all have two things in common. They are hand played, not mechanically punched, and they incorporate expression perforations to control how loudly notes are played. They also have perforation to control pedals. This slide shows the duo art roll, which has its own special way of coding the dynamics. Duo art roll recordings were made with a high speed perforator that was connected to the recording piano. It punched perforations into a moving sheet of paper as the theatres played. The dynamics were by a human interpreter who turned two dials to match the perceived dynamics of accompaniment and thematic notes. The position of the dials controlled punches on the perforator, thereby recording the dynamics as the pianist played. Considerable work was needed to perfect the recording, and Aeolian promoted the idea of pianists editing their own recordings. Hoffman and Prokofiev are said to have edited all their duo art roles. Bauer, Granger and Courteau feature in promotional shots, showing them working with a roll editor. We don't know if Granados helped produce his roll records, which were all made in New York. Certainly he would have worked with producer W. Creary Woods on each recording after it was made, but perhaps not during the late stages of production. Granados recorded 10 works for the duo art, the Velta Mignon was first demonstrated in 1904, and the first instruments were called cabinet models, as in the slide. Rolls for the instrument were made from January 1905. They were usually cut on red paper and were of a non-standard size. The expression perforations are quite sparse because the system uses an arrangement which one perforation turns the function on and another in an adjacent track is off. Duo art rolls use long single perforations for each function. Most of the records and machinery from the Velta factory were lost in World War II. However, enough evidence has been found to give us a good idea of how Velta Mignon rolls were recorded. 
This slide shows a note recorder used by Velta to make organ rolls, probably also piano rolls. The inked wheels, one for each piano key, were arranged so that when a key was played, an electrical relay caused the relevant wheel to draw a line on the moving roll of paper until the key was released. Importantly, Velta invented a way of recording the dynamics of the play. This slide shows a photo of the only known Velta Mignon master recording in which a faint line that appears to trace the playing dynamics is on the left of the paper. The right-hand photo shows this line enhanced. It is clear from pianist contracts that enough information was recorded to allow roles to be produced without the pianist's involvement. The recording contract signed by Fanny Davies only allows her to record a work again, not request changes to the recording. Blue Phil Zeisler wanted to hear her role recording before they were issued. However, Velta advised her there was no contractual obligation to provide this. Performances were not edited as technicians produced roles, not musicians. And there are actually errors on a few Velta big on roles that a musical editor would have fixed. It was a remarkable invention and the recordings are as faithful to the artist as the technology could allow. Granados recorded nine works for Velta in 1913. Hupfeld's first true reproduced piano was the D, first demonstrated in 1907, which was preceded in 1905 by the pedal-powered Fanola and the motor-powered photo list, which had three levels of expression. Although the Deer had six levels of expression, it had limited success against the Velta Bignon and was discontinued in 1913. Rolls, rolls for Hupfeld instruments were recorded by marking lines on a master roll. This photo shows the recording apparatus on the right. The same equipment would have been used to make phenolic rolls. From around 1913, Huffeld produced the animatic duo phenola, which became the triphenola in 1920, when foot pedals were added to pump stand play rolls. Animatic means the rolls are standard size, unlike the deer and the Velta Mignon. The triphenola and duo phenola are identical otherwise and were full expression pianos. This roll recorded by Dalbert, is likely to have been recorded originally for the Fanola or the Dia, given its low number and slow roll speed of six feet per minute. Going on roll numbers, Granados recorded for Hupfeld possibly in 1914, making 11 recordings, the most for any of the systems. His recordings would have been made using the latest equipment and would not have been a revised early record. The Playella Company in Paris entered into an agreement with Hupfeld around 1912 and manufactured a reproduced piano called Dia Playella. After World War I, the auto Playella reproducing piano appeared. The instrument Granados probably recorded his own piano was a play or band piano on which Carolina will later be performing. This slide shows the Playella recording piano in 1907. And in the background, technician with the recording equipment. Granados recorded eight works for Playella. I previously played an extract of Granados from one of his duo art roles and I'll explain how this came about. It relies on two processes, 
The first is to obtain a MIDI file of the roll. There are two types of MIDI files that can be made of a piano roll. The first and most obvious is a file that captures the perforations as they appear the roll. This type of file is called a data file and is used to operate a MIDI control perforator to cut duplicates of the roll. Obtaining a data file is generally achieved with optical scanning technology. The second type is a MIDI file of the recorded performance. This type of file mimics the pneumatic signals that are sent to the player action in the reproducing piano. It takes into account the size and relative position of the tracker bar holes and also the paper acceleration that occurs when a rock is played. It is this type of MIDI file that I am interested in, as it is the type of file that can be played on contemporary instruments. A difference between a data MIDI file and a performance file is shown in this slide, which shows a section of a test roll. This part of the test plays each note on the piano five times. When looking at the roll, it seems there is a long gap between each note. However, when looking at the pneumatic signal that was sent to the piano, it's obvious that the notes are on and off equal times. This is because of the travel time of the roll over the holes in the tracker bar. The effect of tracker bar holes of different sizes and relative positions is shown in this slide. The holes to read duo art expression perforations are placed before the holes that read the note perforations and are also elongated. This means expression data is read before note data and the expression data is on for a longer time than it appears on the roll. The effect is that certain notes play at a much louder volume than might be thought when looking at the roll. Tracker bars for the various instruments are all different. To make a raw performance MIDI file of a piano roll compatible with a modern instrument requires the file to be converted through a process called emulation. Before I explain that, here is a short video that shows the equipment I use to read piano rolls into a computer as a raw performance MIDI file. produce piano roll MIDI files is all in this studio. This instrument is a 1925 duo art reproducing piano fitted with MIDI controlled electric valves so it can play e-roll MIDI files. It is the monitor instrument when recording duo art rolls. Ampico rolls are monitored with this instrument, a 1923 model A Ampico in a Knabi piano. It too has MIDI valves to play from e-roll files. Velta piano rolls are monitored with a disc clavier. This instrument is new and is the pro version for best reproduction of the MIDI files. To convert the piano roll expression and pedal data to MIDI codes that the disc clavier can respond to requires a device called an emulator. This particular emulator contains a microprocessor and works with all three types of Velta rolls. The roll reader has two main parts. This is the spool box in which a precision roll drive motor pulls the roll over the tracker bar onto the take-up spool. The roll motor speed is set to the tempo marking on the roll. The tracking system is adjusted for each roll so the tracker bar follows the roll to keep it aligned. The re-roll system also provides braking to maintain correct roll tension and is set before the roll is played. Each type of roll has a tracker bar to suit the roll, and these are fitted in place as required. This tracker bar is for duo art rolls, and this one is for Ampico rolls. 
and the bar in the reader is for Velta Green and licensee roles. To record Velta Mignon roles, a whole different spool box is required in which this spool box replaces that presently on the roll reader. This is a spool box adapted from an original instrument. The rolls play from bottom to top, and all Velta Mignon rolls have the same paper speed of 10 feet per minute. Looking behind the roll reader, where each hole in the tracker bar connects to an electro-pneumatic switch, which senses the presence of roll perforations, there are 100 switches contained in airtight enclosures that connect to a small vacuum pump. The switches are the most critical component of all, and are calibrated so each switch behaves in an identical way. The vacuum pump is electronically regulated and is driven by a small 12-volt motor. The power supply for the spool box and the electronics to convert the switch signals to MIDI are stored in this cabinet. Here is an example showing a roll being recorded. Slide 22. Yes. Ready? Slide 22. Yes. We are ready. Good. My philosophy about recording rolls as MIDI files is to read the roll perforations in the same way as they are read in an original instrument. The difference between this roll reader and an original instrument is simply one of precision, as the principles are identical. A roll reader is a complex device. This one took me six years to design and construct. A critical component in the roll reader is the design of the electro-pneumatic switches. These operate in an identical manner to the pneumatic valves in a reproducing piano. Each switch has a bipolar Hall effect component, which switches on in the presence of a magnetic field and switches off in the presence of a magnetic field of the opposite polarity. The tiny piece of flexible magnet material provides this when it is moved by one millimetre when the diaphragm is inflated. Each switch is calibrated by pulsing it with a pneumatic signal and adjusting the position of the Hall effect device so the display on a digital oscilloscope conforms to the standards I have set. A number of tests are applied to each switch and each has to be within a few percent of the fields. The MIDI data that comes from the roll reader is the raw MIDI data, 
which includes the expression and pedal perforations. This type of file is played on a MIDI-equipped duo art reproducing piano, but not on a contemporary MIDI instrument. To make the file playable on a contemporary MIDI piano requires converting the expression perforations to MIDI velocity values and also converting the perforations for pedal operation to MIDI control codes. The resulting standard MIDI file has only the playing notes, as notes representing expression and pedal data are now converted to standard MIDI data. This slide shows a prototype Delta expression decoder. It has two circuit boards that contain analog electronics that model the behavior of a VELTA expression regulator. There are two because a VELTA reproducing piano, like all reproducing pianos, has two expression regulators, one for the bass side of the keyboard, the other for the treble side. The only software in this model is contained in a microprocessor that attaches the required velocity data to the notes as they pass through the microprocessor. The velocity data is generated by the analog circuitry on the two circuit boards. I chose this method as it potentially offers the highest accuracy. This slide shows the prototype Velta Express decoder in use to provide a means of monitoring Velta and Vignon rolls on the disc clavier. The oscilloscope shows the behaviour of the analogue circuits, which are mimicking the behaviour of the ex pneumatic expression regulators in a Velta Vignon. To construct the models, required an in-depth understanding of the functioning of the Velta expression regulators and obtaining figures relating suction levels as used in original instruments and MIDI velocity values as used in contemporary instruments. This slide shows the apparatus I used to achieve this. I conducted a range of tests with different values of suction in which the wooden finger was operated by pneumatic, as in a plus piano. The resulting velocity values for each level of suction were recorded by the disc. After collating the many values obtained from the tests, the results were graphed as shown in this slide. The curves show that there is a logarithmic relationship between suction and MIDI velocity values. That is, a small change in suction level at the low end of the curves gives a larger change in volume than at the high end. Also, the lighter the hammer, the higher the velocity values. This is how it should be, so light hammers can produce the same volume as heavy hammers. Validating the accuracy of the Velta expression decoder was done in several ways. This slide shows Velta on roll with expression lines drawn from the pole, and an oscilloscope display of the expression being generated when the MIDI file this part of the roll but played through the decoder. Apart from the top display being upside down compared to the roll, the traces are very similar. Another way to validate the accuracy of the decoder was to compare waveforms of a recording made on a well-adjusted original Velta Mignon and a recording made on a disc clavier. The original instrument is owned by a friend in London and is the Steinway Model O Grand, about six feet long. It is arguably one of the best Velta Mignons I have heard. The disc clavier is in a six foot six inch piano, and it's slightly longer than the Steinway. The waveforms are undoubtedly very similar. As the video showed, the present device is entirely based on a microprocessor in which the software was developed from results obtained with prototype decoder. This unit works with all types of Velta rolls, unlike the prototype. It is possible to write computer software to do this, 
But my concern is that operating systems like Windows or Apple iOS can introduce delays to the process. However, I'm working with a software developer to write software that will emulate all types of reproducing piano rolls. This particular unit has several other features that have allowed me to research aspects associated with pedaling. One of the grey areas of piano rolls. To produce standard MIDI files of duo art rolls, I use a program called WindPlay, written in 1998 by Richard Brandle. It has a few problems, but once these are known, it works quite well. I started my doctorate in February 2013, and at the same time, I also began recording piano rolls from the Dennis Condon collection. Condon had a collection of 7,500 piano rolls gathered over his lifetime that was purchased by Stanford University. Before it left Australia in August 2014, I recorded every role of art music and some of the popular music in the collection. As a result, when this and the many other collections I have recorded are combined, I have committed over 6,500 piano rolls to computer, both as raw MIDI files and as standard MIDI files. Standard MIDI files of piano rolls can be played on modern player pianos, such as Yamaha's disc clavier. Another way to hear these rolls is to render them with virtual piano software to produce audio files. This makes piano roll recordings very accessible, and I am presently providing audio files of piano roll made this way to a number of researchers. This slide shows the Garreton Yamaha CFX Virtual Piano, which you have heard throughout this presentation, even in the video. A significant advantage of a virtual piano is the complete lack of mechanical problems. It also stays in tune forever. To end this talk, I'm playing a recording made by Granados that you may never have heard. He recorded this only a few days before setting sail on the ill-fated Sussex. An account of the recording is in the 1927 Duo catalogue. The work is called Reverie Improvisation, issued eight months after his untimely death. The text on the slide is abbreviated from that in the Duo catalogue.
Beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much for your time at this time. <laughs> yeah. So we hope to, to have you someday here among us. Yes, indeed. indeed. And uh, again, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye from Barcelona. Bye bye from Sydney.